Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to today's online workshop. These are hosted um, by volunteers in the training team. Um, and these are, I guess, official education hours um, by the WordPress project. So welcome to today's online workshop. Today's topic, we'll be talking about how to vet content topic ideas for the WordPress training team. Um, so what is the WordPress training team, first of all? How many people know about the website Learn WordPress? Hopefully, hopefully everybody's heard of it before. If you haven't, okay, yep, I see a few hands. Um, if you haven't heard about Learn WordPress, this is the official education website for the WordPress project. So you can go to YouTube and find videos. You can find information on people's blogs. Um, but this is where the WordPress project publishes different types of learning material. And we have four different types of content on Learn. Um, there is an easy way to see it on this homepage. I'm just going to click in here. All right. And I want you to focus on the menu bar at the top here. So Learn has four different types of content. We have tutorials, we have online workshops, we have courses, and we have lesson plans. So tutorials are five to 10 minute short videos that talk about a specific topic. Um, online workshops are hour long interactive sessions um, like we're hosting right now, uh, where people can ask questions, um, investigate new features of WordPress, test out new ideas, um, and meet other co community members as well. Then courses, these are online courses where you can work through on your own. Um, and uh, the Learn WordPress website will uh, record your progress. So if you have to step away in the middle of a course, you can come back at a later day and continue with your learning. And then finally, lesson plans. Lesson plans are for teachers to use when they teach a classroom or a WordPress meetup group, um, different topics about WordPress. So the first three resources are aimed at learners of WordPress and lesson plans are aimed at teachers of WordPress. This is, going to, this is an important part um, in the topic vetting process. So keep in mind, we have three, courses, uh, three types of content for learners and one type for teachers. Now, for any of these content types, before, somebody, before a content creator creates the content, the topic of the content is first vetted. And so that's what we'll be talking about today. Um, so somebody has an idea. Um, it'd be great if we had, say, an online workshop about building a online website, uh, sorry, an online store. Um, so somebody makes that suggestion to the training team. And then there are a group of people who look at that topic idea um, and flesh it out a bit. So um, make an online, web, uh, online store is important, but what, what does that actually mean? Like, What does the user have to learn throughout the process of the course in order to achieve that? And then they also assess whether that's a priority for the training team right now. So currently the training team has like a hundred topic ideas we've had submitted. And so it's important to line those up in priority so we can work on the high priority content first. And so vetting content topic ideas um, involves uh, fleshing out a topic idea in preparation for the content creator and assessing the priority. And until now, this process has been um, very limited um, in that you needed special GitHub access um, in order to vet the topic ideas. And so for about two years, there's basically been no one in the training team vetting topic ideas. Whereas in the last month, we finally updated the process and opened it up so now anyone in the WordPress community can vet topic ideas. Um, and so I'm here excited to share with you today how you can also vet content topic ideas for the WordPress training team. All right, so that, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Any questions so far? Um, anything you want to clarify before we jump into the content? Who votes on or who makes the final determination as to what will be selected topic-wise? Yes, so, <laughs> yep. So um, we call the people who vet topic ideas, subject matter experts. Um, mm -hmm. 
and anybody can become a subject matter expert. That's what I'll be introducing today. But in the training team, we also have a group of dedicated contributors we call faculty members. So we have general subject matter experts, which anybody can be um, become. And then we also have faculty subject matter experts. And these people have, a, have the special access on GitHub um, and they can make the final say. So a general contributor can say, I think this is high priority. And I think these should be the learning objectives and they can flesh the idea out, but that will get passed through a faculty person who will just make sure everything is correct. And on the other hand, because anybody can do this, we could have like spammers get involved. Um, so we do have a faculty person who does the final check, but basically anybody can vet the content topic idea. Hopefully that answers your question. Great. All right. So uh, for many of the training team processes, um, the most important document to refer to is the team handbook. Now I have this bookmarked in my um, browser. I'm gonna send the link to everybody in the Zoom chat here. And if you want to get involved with the training team, I highly recommend you bookmark this as well. The training team handbook has all the how-to guides about the different processes in the training team. Um, so I might sort of increase my a bit so it's a bit easier to see okay so this is the handbook um if you're brand new to the training team then i recommend this getting started link in the top menu bar if you click on getting started this will take you to the training team's onboarding program and that will tell you um, how the training team communicates with each other we actually have five different roles in the training team and so the get the onboarding program will walk you through each of those roles and it'll even walk you to your first contribution. So you can choose the role that meets your interests and then make your first contribution. Um, you'll get a, an idea of how the training team works. Um, so if you're brand new to the training team, I highly recommend the onboarding program, getting started. The handbook is what we're gonna look at right now. And then the third link is the faculty members. So I mentioned these are the people who have dedicated um, certain amount of time from their week to the training team. So by clicking here, you'll be able to find all the faculty members and these would be the best people to ask questions if you have questions along the way. Um, so yeah, that's just the menu at the top here. What we want to focus on today is vetting topic ideas. So if you look in the contents down the left, you'll see we have a lot of content. One of those is titled how-to guides. So we'll open the how-to guides and then further down, we'll see how we use GitHub. We actually, this, this menu actually needs to be tidied up a little, I think. Um, we have a lot of how-to guides at the moment. Uh, but what we want to focus on today is how we use GitHub. And then underneath that, you'll find vetting topic ideas. So we went to how-to guides, how we use GitHub, and then vetting topic ideas. And this document um, has a step-by-step -step guide um, so that anyone can vet topic ideas. So I've just dropped the link in the Zoom chat um, to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, all right, so let me just read this introduction. Um, the first step to getting new quality content on Learn WordPress is to vet the various content topic ideas shared by the WordPress community. These ideas can stem from personal interest to crowdsource consensus, but no matter how it comes to the training team, it will require vetting before it is greenlit for content creation and publication on the Learn WordPress website. So um, topic ideas can come from anyone. Um, we have a form on the Learn WordPress website that says, um, submit your topic ideas here. So um, we can have anybody in the world submit topic ideas. Um, and so the vetting process helps those ideas get into content creation. All right, subject matter experts, and we call them SMEs, are community members who utilize their expertise to vet submitted content topic ideas. In general, SMEs look to assess the ideas for relevance and priority. SMEs may also be contacted by content creators as the content is being developed, requesting additional information and or assistance to create accurate and informative content. 
So subject matter experts, there are two main aspects to their role. The first one is vetting topic ideas. And we say, and you'll notice, oops, you'll notice it says relevance and priority. So we look at topics to see their relevance and priority. Um, and the other aspect of an SME is content creators may contact them as they create the content. So the way we work in the training team, content creators don't have to be experts about the content they're making. Um, like in an extreme case, the content creator could be making developer-focused content, but they themselves don't have to be developers. Um, what they do is they work with the subject matter expert. The subject matter expert hands them the information and then they turn that into a course or a tutorial or an online workshop. And so when subject matter experts vet a topic idea, they are leaving their name on um, a GitHub issue and saying, I have expertise in this area. And along the way, if you have questions, you can reach out to me and ask um, questions and I'd be happy to help. So the subject matter expert is vetting the topic idea, but they're also making themselves available to whoever comes along and makes the content in future to help them out as needed. And then the final paragraph outlined below are the guideline, a guiding processes for vetting content topic ideas for Loam WordPress. Um, so under here, we have the exact steps, um, which I, I'm going to demonstrate on the screen. Um, any questions so far? Let me pause there quickly. Any questions about what the subject matter expert is? You're very clear, thank you. All right, great, great to hear. All right, now, if you have a question and I don't stop talking, you're free to leave it in the Zoom chat as well. Um, so let's, let's continue down the document. So how are topic ideas submitted? So all new topic ideas are created as a GitHub issue on the Learn GitHub repository using the topic ideas GitHub issue template. Once submitted, issues are automatically added to the Learn WordPress topic vetting project board. Issues are first triaged for spam, duplicates, et cetera, by administrators before landing in the awaiting vetting column for SMEs. All right, so that's a lot of information. So let me pause there. And um, the training team works on GitHub. Um, so in order to vet content topic IDs, you need a GitHub account. Um, but um, so the, this is the Learn WordPress GitHub repository. And there's a link here to the topic ideas GitHub issue template. And um, you know what? I did this workshop yesterday and realized this link was incorrect. So before I forget, let me quickly update this handbook page so we have the correct link there for everyone. Um, so you'll see the handbook is also a um, WordPress website. There we go. All right, <clears throat> so coming back down here. Um, so what people do is they use the topic ideas, GitHub issue templates. When you click on this link, you'll notice the training team has two, four, six, eight, nine different issue, uh, GitHub issue templates people use. Um, we have templates for bug reporting. We have templates for content feedback, et cetera. Down the bottom here, we have topic ideas. And so when somebody has a new topic idea, they will create a new issue here. So when they click that, um, they can type their topic title up here. There's a bit of an explanation here of what to do. And then they list topic description, audience, learning objectives, content type, WordPress version, and will you be creating this content or not? And finally, related resources. So somebody fills out as much information as they can and submit this as a new issue. Now, what happens to that issue is it lands in the Learn WordPress Topic Vetting Project Board. So I'll open this project board. Um, and this is what this project board looks like. So, oh, we see somebody submitted a, a topic idea recently. So that is waiting in the awaiting triage column. And um, this column are for, is for administrators. Um, so they first check to make sure it's not a spam issue because we have had people submit spam in the past. Um, if it's spam, we just close it out. 
Um, and we also make sure it's not duplicate. So Learn WordPress already has hundreds of resources and sometimes people might suggest something that actually already exists. And so administrator just makes sure everything's filled out. It's not spam, it's not duplicate. And once they've checked that, the issue comes into the awaiting vetting column. And this is where subject matter experts work. So we have 38 topic ideas at the moment waiting to be vetted um, by subject matter experts. Once a topic is vetted, it moves out of this project board into the content development project board. Um, so then content creators can take that issue and create it. But sometimes issues don't get past the vetting process. For example, somebody may have suggested um, an outdated issue like that was true with WordPress two years ago, but it's not a WordPress feature now, so we don't need it. Um, sometimes a, a topic is a good idea, but a very low priority for the training team at the moment. And so sometimes we just close topic ideas. And so we have a closed column here. So we don't lose the ideas. The ideas are still here, um, but they just don't make it to the content creation project board. So you can see issues move from left to right. Um, now, the other thing is the awaiting vetting column has 38 items. Um, and for a subject matter expert, you're not necessarily an expert in everything. You have specific areas you're an expert in and finding the issues relevant to your expertise out of, out of this whole column can be a bit daunting. And so what we've created are some tabs at the top here that split out the, um, this second con column into different areas um, of expertise. So for example, if a topic was submitted related to, the, related to accessibility, it would show up in the accessibility tab. Um, at the moment, we don't have accessibility topics. Um, so this is blank, but if there was a topic about accessibility, it would come here. We also have block editor. Uh, so we see here, we have 10 issues related to the block editor. So if you have a bit of understanding about the block editor, you could um, triage any of these issues here. We have issues about content, so actually writing content for a website. And then we have issues about contributions, so how you can contribute to the WordPress project, um, et cetera. So you'll see we have uh, roughly 10 different areas of expertise and topics will fall under at least one of these expertise. Um, and so as a, as a subject matter expert, um, rather than looking through this whole awaiting vetting column, you can simply click through to the area of your expertise and vet one of the topics sitting there. All right, so that's an overview of GitHub and how the issue moves through GitHub. Any questions about that? Yeah, just, um, just to clarify for mm -hmm. the subject matter expert, is that, so that's kind of a self-selected thing as far as if you have a GitHub account, you just click on what you feel comfortable in and can drop, hey, I know about this if you want feedback or et cetera. Yep, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I do recommend um, you go through the onboarding program. We have the onboarding program splits into five onboarding paths. Um, we have a path for, for example, content creators. We have a path for content translators. And we also have a path for subject matter experts. So if you take the onboarding program first, it would give you, the onboarding is about 30 to 60 minutes, uh, but that would give you an overview of your area of expertise. Um, but basically once you've done that, you can jump right into GitHub and just start vetting topic ideas. Got it, thanks. Yep. All right, so that's an overview of GitHub. So now let's come down to the actual triaging steps. Um, so we have here, I'm back to the main um, handbook page, the vetting topic ideas handbook page. Um, and then, okay, topic ideas. Below is the list of details on the topic idea submission. So we had a look at that before in the GitHub issue. Um, whoever submits the idea will fill out as much of this as possible. The next, the section says topic idea triaging performed by admins. So, oops, um, that was, let's see, moving issues from here to here. 
Um, in order to move issues between columns, you need that special GitHub access. Um, not every contributor has that. So that is reserved for faculty administrators. So you can basically just ignore the items here and the administrator will triage that at some point or another. Um, so we'll skip all that. And now finally, vetting topic ideas. So this is the main focus of today. All right. It can sometimes be difficult to assess topic ideas on an individual level. So don't hesitate to reach out to faculty, faculty subject matter experts for a second opinion along the way. You can do so by pinging the faculty SME group in the training Slack channel. So I mentioned before we have the faculty program and this is a dedicated group of contributors who have given certain amount of time from their week to the training team. Um, while you're vetting a topic, if you have questions, um, feel free to ping the faculty subject matter experts in Slack. So Slack is the tool the training team uses to communicate. Um, and you can ping individual faculty members as well, but we recommend using this Slack call word. So if you type at faculty hyphen SME, this will ping all the faculty members in the training team at once. Um, and then anybody who's online uh, will be able to get to you. So if you ping one person and they're on vacation for 10 days, you might not hear from them for a while. But if you ping the whole faculty subject matter expert group, then anybody who's online will be able to answer your questions for you. Um, so just hopefully that puts you at ease. Like if you, if you start on this process and get stuck at any way in the process, uh, there is a group of faculty people who can help you with that. Um, yep, Aileen, are you talking about this link, vetting topic ideas? Yes, please. All right. Okay. Yep, so I've just sent you the link to this section of the handbook, the vetting topic ideas section. Perfect, thank you. Yep. All right, now steps to vet topic ideas. So this is a six step process. And I'm going to pick up an issue right now and actually work through the, issue, um, the steps for you. So step one, open one of the topic views linked below to vet ideas related to that topic. So we have different li uh, links here, accessibility, block editor, content, et cetera. And these connect to the tabs at the top of the GitHub board here. So as long as you bookmark the handbook page, you can quickly access each of these items. So let me see, what am I gonna work on today? What's contribution? Content. Frequently used blocks. Review the common blocks and how these are often the most suggested. Yeah, might as well look at this issue. All right, I'll open this up and I will be vetting this one today. Um, so, that was step one. Step two, open an issue, then copy paste the following text into the comment. This will act as your guide as you vet the topic. So what you do, oops, 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 is you just copy all of that. And then I come over here and in a new comment, I paste that. And this will act as my guide as I vet this topic. So what does the checklist have? It says, first of all, priority, either high, medium or low. So I decide a priority and then feedback regarding the topic description, feedback regarding the learning objectives and any other feedback. And then finally, related resources. If you know of other related resources that would assist in creating this content, list them below. All right. Well, step two was copying that across. Step three, take note of what content type this is a suggestion for. This should be listed in the issue body, in the issue title, and added as a label. So someone might be suggesting a new content type for an existing piece of content, and that is okay. Assess whether the content type would make sense for the topic being suggested. All right, so we come over here and at the top, maybe I should increase the font size here a bit more. All right. So at the top, you'll see this is frequently used blocks, lesson plan. So at the beginning of this session, I said we have four different content types on Learn. Lesson plans are aimed at teachers who teach a classroom of um, users. So this is a lesson plan for teachers teaching about 
frequently used blocks. So um, just keep that in mind. So we're making this for teachers. Um, so you'll see the audience. So the topic description was review the common blocks and how these are often the most suggested. So it's talking about this, the block suggestions in the block editor, I guess. Audience is users, learning objectives. Okay, this person didn't suggest it, um, didn't submit any learning objectives. Um, so we'll need to fill that out. Content type is lesson plan. WordPress version optional. We be creating this content, yes or no, it doesn't say. All right. So that gives us an overview of what this idea is about. Next, step four. Assess the relevance of the issue and assign a priority. So if an idea is not relevant, add a brief comment describing your reasoning and press close the issue. So you can just close an issue if you feel like this is just not relevant. Like maybe it's not a WordPress topic um, or maybe it's just nobody's going to need that content. In that case, we can just close the issue. If an idea is relevant, write either high, medium or low in your comment. So a relevant topic, so how, how do you decide relevance? A relevant topic is timely with the latest releases, up to date with latest practices, and follows the team's promotional guidelines and GPL best practices. Priority is assessed by whether or not the topic is critical to something in the latest release, hits on a needs analysis trend, or fixes gap fixes a gap in previously published foundational content. So we talk about relevance and priority here. So if this is something related to the most recent WordPress release, that is a very relevant topic. Um, or if it's talking about recent practices, um, that's a relevant topic as well. In this case, frequently, frequently used blocks isn't necessarily tied to the recent WordPress release. Um, and it isn't necessarily tied to like best practices either. So in my mind, this is going to get a, a lower um, priority. And we also look down here, um, priorities assessed by whether or not the topic is critical. This topic isn't really critical. People don't need to know about the most used blocks in order to use WordPress. Um, does it fix a gap in previously published foundational content? Now, if you're familiar with the Learn WordPress website, you'll start to get an idea of what content we're missing. Um, so if you're not sure here, you can just skip that. Um, but overall, I'm going to say this topic is, is good, um, but the priority is low because it's not necessary for somebody to be able to use WordPress. Um, so what I would do is I would just type low, all right? Um, Anton asked, do you give one rating on high, medium, low? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So we look at relevance and priority to choose one rating. Um, so that was step four. And would you believe this handbook page has two step fours? Um, so let me quickly update that as well at the moment before we forget. First thing topic is one, two, three, four. So this, this item should be starting at five. There we go. All right, so we come back down here. So we just, we just did this. We just assigned the priority, step four. So next we'll come to step five. Assess the submitted details of the topic and provide feedback. Um, see also how to finalize description and objectives. So what, so the next point is the feedback. We got feedback regarding the topic description, feedback regarding the learning objectives and any other feedback. So to be honest, this topic um, didn't have a lot of description, like review the common blocks and how these are often the most suggested. Um, there isn't a lot of detail here. So a subject matter expert has two options. The first one, is to send the issue back to the person who submitted it and say, um, could you please add a little bit more detail so we can vet this better? Um, or the second option is for the subject matter expert to just go ahead and um, flesh out the description and learning objectives a bit more. Um, I'm going to take that path um, so you can see how I decide learning objectives in that. Um, but if it really, 
if you feel that there just really isn't enough information here, um, you can send the issue back and ask the submitter for more information. Now, I will say in this particular case, this says um, Courtney has submitted the issue, um, but I know it isn't Courtney. Um, so the training team used to use a different software to manage our topics, um, topic submissions called Trello. Um, and Courtney imported all the data from Trello into GitHub. So um, that's why her name comes up on a lot of topic ideas. Um, Courtney has made a lot of suggestions, but um, she isn't the one who submitted every single thing. Um, so just, I would just want to clarify that um, the fact this issue doesn't have a lot of information isn't necessarily a bad sign about Courtney. It's just what was submitted years ago and Courtney imported that into GitHub. All right, so topic description review, the common blocks and how these are often the most suggested. I'm going to take a bit of creative liberty here and frequently use blocks. I'm gonna imagine we're talking about um, a casual blogger. And so a casual blogger is probably going to be using <clears throat> um, the paragraph block, heading block, uh, maybe image blocks. Um, and I'm wondering if like um, using those blocks from an accessibility and SEO perspective could be an interesting topic to introduce here. So frequently used blocks are like heading, um, but maybe teaching how to nest heading blocks um, is something new users could benefit from. Or if we're using image blocks, then the importance of adding alternative text, et cetera, could be something we could talk about here. Another block, um, frequently used blocks, like the column block, um, those layout related blocks um, could be something a new user would benefit from learning from. Um, so I'm starting to form a thought here. We can talk about accessibility in SEO when using blogs and also um, maybe layout related things. Um, so to details or to the description, feedback in the description, um, let's develop this content with two focuses. <clears throat> um, and then I might, uh, let's see. Accessibility, SEO considerations, or should make when using heading, image, et cetera. And the second one is um, <clears throat> um, introduce the different layout grouping related blocks and how they can be used. All right, so I'm sort of just fleshing out the description a bit more of what this lesson is going to be talking about. And uh, next feedback regarding the learning objectives. <clears throat> So this didn't have any learning objectives, so we can finalize that for this issue. And coming back to the handbook, you'll see there's a link, how to finalize description of, and objectives. Um, this is a, a pretty good page. It's, it's short, it's short, but it gives you an idea of what a learning objective is. A learning objective is. So learning objectives must contain four parts. An audience, um, who are we talking about? Behavior. What is the new knowledge, skill, or attitude you hope to achieve? Condition, what are the circumstances under which they will demonstrate the behavior? And degree, how well or how often will they demonstrate the behavior? So that's an A, B, C, D model. Um, and these should be specific, measurable, attainable, and time-bound. Um, so, Let's see, in this case, we're talking about users. We, we know the audience is users, so people who blog or um, create websites. Um, what skill do we want them to achieve? So we can write two or three learning objectives. Um, we were talking about accessibility and SEO consideration. So that's a skill we want them to achieve. Um, what are the circumstances under which they'll demonstrate the behavior? I'm gonna say we want them to demonstrate this behavior when they write content and so putting all that together let me see if i can draft our first learning objective um 
users will be able to um, use headings. Uh, we'll be able to nest headings appropriately um, when writing content. Use will be able to, um, let's say we're talking about frequently used blocks. So we'll be able to use the headings blocks appropriately when writing content, considering accessibility and SEO best practices. So um, this is very, we're trying to make this as specific as possible. So who, when, what are they going to do? How are they going to achieve that? So be able to use heading box. So let's, let's make this a bit more specific. Able to write content with headings, um, placed appropriately throughout considering user will to write content with headings, heading blocks placed appropriately throughout considering accessibility and SEO best practices. All right, that looks like a pretty good objective to me. And the second objective we talked about um, layout and grouping related blocks. So um, I think the columns block um, is something um, people might be up, might be interested in. And the next one is like grouping and um, you placing things in a row, et cetera. So uh, let's see, what is something specific we want people to achieve with these layout blocks? Um, Users will, let's see, describe, recall, recognize skills, apply, modify, construct. Um, construct looks good, isn't it? Predict. So I'm, I'm using the words here as sort of a brainstorming um, assistance. Um, so let's see, oops. Users will be able to construct um, pages that include a columns block um, and learn uh, the construct pages that include columns block, columns, a columns block. Um, Track page that include a columns block. Hmm. If anybody has ideas here, um, feel free to help me out. <laughs> I'm, I'm being watched by half a dozen people, which is getting me nervous. <laughs> now the construct pages that include a columns block. Uh, how about we talk about how the columns block behaves differently on mobile and desktop? and people would still be able to build a page with that in consideration. Aileen, I saw you just unmuted. What about, um, are there any kind of add-ons? I'm not, I'm, I don't have a lot of word, word press experience, so what if my terminology is off, let me know. Is there yep. anything that they could add for SEO? Is that Yoast or something like that, or? Yeah, um, we could include like, that. To embellish that, so to speak. Yep. Like to, to build on that. So this is like on page SEO things that you could do. And then do you want to expand to something that you could add to the site that could help once you get your headers? Uh, what about running like wave, wave checks? You know, those accessibility checks using those tools. Can you say something about that here? Yeah, um, I'm... I want to keep in mind the topic here was about frequently used blocks. Okay, so I'm sorry. I do it all. No, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, the ideas you have were good, for example, if the resource was about SEO or accessibility. I'm sorry. Um, but... I think for your topic and I didn't know it was one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just thought something else 
a frequently used block might be the navigation block. That one is a bit intricate. And so that might be something good to bring up. Mm -hmm. um, Anton just left a comment, two cents. Users will be able to create a variety of responsive layouts using the columns and row blocks and different shape between the two. You know what? I love that. So I am going to copy that and paste that into GitHub. Are you, are you okay if I use that as is? Uh, yep. <laughs> so users will be able to create a variety of responsive layouts using the columns and row block and differentiate between the two. I think that's really good. And I'm going to add one more, the navigation block, because I think that one um, is another frequently used block we can talk about. So um, user, users will be able to create a new navigation menu in the navigation block and I'll create a new navigation menu in the navigation block and um, position that or add that to the header of the oops of TATIR site. All right, so let me just switch that to preview so it's a bit easier to read. Uh, so feedback around the learning objectives. So feedback um, as there were no learning objectives submitted, let's use these. All right, so users will be able to write content with heading blocks placed appropriately throughout considering accessibility and SEO best practices. Users will be able to create a variety of responsive layouts using the columns and row blocks and differentiate between the two. And users will be able to create a new navigation menu in the navigation block and add that to the header of their site. Um, I think we have, uh, uh, yeah. Is there anything to be said about images? Oh yeah, I, I mentioned that didn't I? So heading blocks, um, users will understand the importance of alt text on images and know where they can edit on their site. How does that look? Yep, I think that looks pretty good. Um, so any other feedback? Um, we're covering a lot of ground in this content. Um, try and keep, um, try and keep this to an overview. Um, and link to relate or and share related resources with students um, as needed. So this was a lesson plan for teachers. Um, and so if you start like diving into each of these, as you said, we can start talking about plugins and all that. And it can, I think it can get quite in depth. Um, so just a piece of feedback, we're covering a little ground in this content, try and keep this to an overview and share related resources with students as needed. Um, Can you then, give an exercise, uh, like a minor exercise based on this? Do you do that, like for teaching plans? Say, okay, with this information. Um, yeah, so um, a content creator would then take this and then build out the, the lesson plan and the activity and the okay. Um, okay. questions and that. Um, if you have ideas, feel free to leave those here, mm -hmm. um, but it's not a necessary part of the topic vetting process. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I'm going to slow here. No, 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 no problem. Um, the other thing you can do is, um, for example, a subject matter expert can also become a content creator. So if you look in the top issue here, you'll see it says, will you be creating this content? So Whoever submits an issue can actually raise their hand and say, once it's vetted, I would like to make this. In this case, we don't have anybody who's raised their hand yet. 
Um, so if you really like this issue and you think you can make it, um, you can leave an extra comment at the bottom here. So you've vetted it, you're, you've vetted it as an SME, um, and then at the bottom, you could say, I'd also like to create this or something, and then we can assign the issue to you. Um, so people can have more than one role. All right? Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, so we were just doing step five, assess the submitted details of the topic and provide feedback. Number six, add links to any other related resource you think will assist the content creator when creating this content. Um, so you, you see here related resources. Now you can add whatever you want here. For example, if you've seen a YouTube video that talks about a very similar topic, um, you can leave a link to that YouTube video and then the content creator can reference that when they make the content. Um, or like if you've seen an article on, let's say WP Beginner or like another website like that, um, you can reference that. Um, or if there's like documentation, official WordPress documentation that's related, um, we can mention that. So really anything that would help the content creator, um, um, you can list here. So um, just just one thing, Ben. Um, yep. But Kraus gave a navigation block demo the other day. Would you, could we, and, and it's going to be on WordPress TV, I think Courtney posted that could could we put a link to that yep if yep let me have a look so this is wordpress.tv and something about the navigation block yes uh-huh why wish there it is it's bud crafts yeah Sorry? that uh-huh yep 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 so we can take that and the content creator may watch this and add it to their content, or they uh, might add it as like a related resource to the content when they share it, when they create it. So let's see. So you drop the link like that. Mm -hmm. um, so you can spend a bit more time on that if you want. For the sake of this workshop, I'm going to start wrapping up. Uh, but that was step six. And any other links? And then number seven, the final step. Once you've submitted your comments, ping faculty admin in the training Slack channel, asking them to process the issue for you and move it to the content developer project board. All right, so that's it. We've, we've, we've vetted this topic, so we'll press comment. All right. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to move this issue from the topic vetting project board into the content creating project board. And, um, and uh, only faculty have the access to do that. So what you would do is you would go to the training Slack channel. Um, and this time we're pinging faculty admin. So uh, I think up here, there was a comment about pinging faculty SME if you get stuck with the topic vetting process. Um, down here, you can ping faculty admin. And, and then admin um, with availability will be able to move the issue for you. So we even have a message you can use. Um, Hi, faculty admin, I vetted the topic on this GitHub issue, link to GitHub issue. Could you process this issue and move it to the content development project board, please? Thanks. Now, I am a faculty admin and I have access to do this. So I will just show you what an admin would do. Um, but what an admin would do, um, or actually, for the sake of admin who might be watching this video, let me just show you what the guide says. So we actually have a guide here for faculty admin about moving vetted topics to the content development project board. Um, so the steps are label and move topic ideas. So ensure all details have been filled in um, either by the issue, the topic submitter or in the comments by the SME. So the admin would check this, it would come down here and check that. Yep, this all looks good. All right. Add at least one each of the following labels, priority, audience, experience level, and version. So what an admin would do is they would look at what the SME wrote down here and the SME said low priority. So the admin would go, okay, so the priority is low. And then an audience, so audience was already added here. Experience level, 
experience level was already added as well. WordPress version isn't relevant. Um, so all the labels are added. Step three, remove the needs subject matter expert label. So I will remove that. And basically by me commenting on this issue here, I've told whoever content creator comes along and picks this up that I'm a subject matter expert. They can ask questions if they get stuck as they make the content. Um, so commenting is sort of leaving your name there for them to um, contact you again in future if needed. And then <clears throat> move the issue from learn WordPress topic vetting to learn WordPress content development. So I will move this. So projects, I will move it from topic vetting to content development. And the status is ready to create. So now a content creator can come along and create this content based on the information we've provided. And then finally, step five, copy paste one of the following as a comment to the issue listing next steps. So when the content creator comes along, we want them to have clear next steps as to what to do. And so in this case, it was a lesson plan. So I will copy this message here. I will paste that down here. And the comment says, this topic is ready to be created. Please follow the handbook page lesson plans for next steps. And this is now ready for a content creator to create. All right, so those final steps were for faculty administrators watching this recording later. Um, but that is an overview of how topic, topics are created as a GitHub issue, how they move through the flow, how a subject matter expert vets them, and how it's finally sent to the content development project board. Any questions about any of that? So it seems pretty proactive then. It's like you grab what you want to work on. It's not assigned to you. Correct. For subject matter experts, anybody can just jump in and work on an issue. Okay. Yep. So if I want to create content, I have to wait until it's in a certain pipe and then pick it up. Like the last piece where you said where it would go after yep. the submit looked at it. Yep. So yeah, this, this would be another totally different um, <laughs> online workshop, but just to give you a quick glimpse, um, the, learn, the training team has a learn WP content development project board. So we were looking at the topic vetting project board. If you go to the content development project board, this is where content creators generally work. And you'll see here, we have 94 issues ready to create. So a content creator could pick up any of these issues um, which okay. have all been vetted and start working on that. And then these go to draft in progress, review in progress, and then publish the code. So this goes through like a similar process, which is all documented in the handbook, um, but would be another online workshop. Okay, thank you. Yep. Ben, I have a question about- Sure. Can be a topic. Like if something comes up in a workshop and yep. I'll give you an example from a couple of times ago, um, someone they mentioned like okay the the recording will be on uh, you know on wordpress tv and we'll add the captioning and he's like well how do you add the captioning so mm -hmm. it's not really wordpress it could be for anything it's about video but it was came up in a wordpress meetup so would that be eligible to be worked on or yes. outside the realm yep um, very good question. Um, in the trading team, if something is related to WordPress, even remotely, then that is a good topic to suggest. So for example, WordPress TV is a, a um, WordPress project. And so and videos that go onto WordPress TV need to be subtitled. And so an online workshop on how to subtitle videos would be totally acceptable. And Actually, I would say it's like a medium or high priority item because it's it's a very um, necessary part of the training team processes. So, yes. Um, Thank you. Yeah. To give you another example, um, I have done online workshops on, for example, domains or um, like web servers, and these aren't specifically tied to WordPress. Like you could use 
non-WordPress content management systems, and you would still need a domain, you'd still need a web server, but they are necessary for people wanting to build out WordPress websites. Like it, knowledge about domains is still important. So although WordPress doesn't come up even once in that presentation, it's still relevant to WordPress and therefore it's a content the training team can work on. So um, it just needs to be loosely connected to WordPress and it would still be okay. Yep. All right. Well, we're at the top of the hour. So thank you everybody for coming. And um, more than anything, do come vet topic ideas. And that was what this session was all about. So hopefully after watching this presentation, you are now confident enough to go ahead and try vetting some content topic ideas. Um, again, if you have questions, you can reach out to faculty in the training um, Slack channel at any time and people can help you. Um, and so, yeah, thank you very much for attending. Thank you. Have a good night. Yep. Good morning. And thank morning. you, Tracy, for yeah. And thank you, Tracy, for co-hosting. Thank you, Tracy. Sure. Anytime. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have fun on the beach. <laughs>